2020, many investors jump into the market during the pandemic, hoping to make a fortune riding on specific investment themes such as the shortage of PPE and the desperate needs of COVID-19 vaccines. 2021, even more investors started to put money into the market, thinking as economies around the world are reopening for business post-pandemic, the pent-up demand will drive economic growth. 2022, all dreams were crushed. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show. The world has officially dipped into a bear market in 2022. Many investors panic, some even thinking investing is a fraud. Only the elites are making a fortune in a highly sophisticated stock market. But what if I tell you this is your once in a lifetime opportunity to make all the money you could when all this mess is over? And all you need to pay attention to is these three key events around you. This 1st of July, we'll be holding a workshop on dividend investing. In this three-hour workshop, you will learn four things. How dividend works to your advantage. How to identify a good dividend stock using the logic investing framework. How to build an investment portfolio that generate passive income for you. And finally, how to confidently execute your investment strategy with a strong foundation. Joining this workshop, you're guaranteed to have the confidence and knowledge of picking a good dividend stock to invest in by the end of it. Seats are limited. So register now with this link or by scanning the QR code shown on the screen. But before I go into that, we need to first understand what is going on in the world. The headlines are talking about the Ukraine war. Let's recap how this war started in the first place. You see, Ukraine's leader in recent years have made enthusiastic pleas about their desire to bring the country into NATO. This is especially apparent when President Zelensky was elected into office in 2019. According to one of the surveys in the country conducted in the beginning of the year, 62% of adults supported Ukraine's entry into NATO, with just 30% opposed. From the Russian perspective, this poses a threat to its national security because it would mean that Western powers are closing in to Russian borders in the West if Ukraine is allowed to join NATO. If you're interested to find out more about the Ukraine war, I really suggest you to watch my previous video. Maybe if Zelensky was not so aggressive about his political agenda to squeeze Ukraine into NATO, the country might be able to avoid this war and the rest of the world would not need to suffer today. Hmm. Anyways, damage is done and we must appreciate and respect the Ukrainian decision on the matter. Ukraine is a dominant supplier of many of our good ingredients on a global scale. When Russia decided to invade Ukraine, all these crops were destroyed from the shelling. Moreover, even if the crops made it to harvest, they all got stuck at the seaports as Russian military is blocking the traffic on the Black Sea. As a consequence, millions are starving from food shortages today. I'm sure sure most of you are feeling the pinch too when grocery shopping bills seems getting more and more expensive week over week. That's inflation. If you still think the Ukraine war has nothing to do with you, think about this. The country is responsible for producing half of the world's demand for neon gas, an important raw material to make semiconductors. Half! That's 50% of global supply. With the raw material prices going up due to a shortage of neon gas, it is definitely going to make your electronic gadgets more expensive from now on. With the war ongoing, European countries, which typically rely heavily on Russian oil, are biting the bullets and imposing partial embargo on its oil and gas products. It is a painful exercise because Europeans will have to source for oil and gas from other oil producing countries such as the Middle East and the US during this period of time. And that means creating an artificial increase in the demand for oil and gas in other parts of the world that is driving prices up. Again, that's inflation. Moving on to the east, we have China that has just reopened Shanghai after two months of lockdown to curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Goods that have been waiting to be shipped out from the world's manufacturing powerhouse are all piling up at the ports, waiting for the ships to come. This sounds like great news because China is filling in the shortage that the world is facing today. But wait a minute, it is also drawing a lot of free demand to ship things out at this point and that could possibly contribute to higher transportation costs globally. In order to import things to your doorstep, get ready to pay more. Again, that's inflation. 
So as you can see, the major events that are happening around us are all causing hyperinflation. Actually, right, this episode of economic meltdown did not happen overnight. It started way back during the subprime mortgage crisis. Central bankers around the world were cracking their head to revive the economies and somebody came up with a brilliant idea to print money. And money printing has never stopped since. Just look at the chart. It even got more serious during the pandemic. These are cheap money flying around and making people feel rich. They spent and invested to make even more money and eventually inflated all the prices up to where it is today. Again, inflation. At this point, I guess you kind of know where this is going. Yes, as long as we are able to control inflation, we could bring the economy back on track. To do that, central bankers are using the most powerful tool it has to manipulate human behavior and to tame inflation. Manipulate is a strong word, but it does depict the whole point here. We all know that central bankers are increasing interest rates to fight inflation. When the interest rate is high enough, everyone becomes more reluctant to spend because the banks will reward you more for saving. And finally, we are able to cool down our economy and tame inflation. The key here is, when is the interest rate high enough? So how much is high enough? How? I don't know. Every time interest rate increases, it is going to make borrowing more expensive. Businesses become increasingly challenging to service their loans. In extreme cases, they may even close down if the interest expenses become unsustainable. When that happens, many people are going to lose their jobs. Consequently, to solve this problem, the government has come up with the financial assistance to help businesses affected by COVID-19. This financial assistance under Budget 2022, it's called Jumpstart Financial giving businesses working capital with a minimum financing limit of 50,000 ringgit and a maximum of 500,000 ringgit over a tenure of up to six years, including six months payment holiday. So as long as your business is registered under either SSM or professional regulatory bodies and at least 60% equity is being held by Malaysian, then you will be able to apply for this financial assistance. You can apply now via the link provided in the description below. Anyways, what we are experiencing today is rather extraordinary. An interest rate hike is supposed to slow the economy down. It's supposed to tame inflation. But maybe because of the Ukraine war and the pan up demand from the previous COVID-19 lockdown is still very strong, everyone is chasing for goods and services like there's no tomorrow. No matter how much central bankers react on interest rates, nobody cares. But don't forget, businesses are already feeling the pressure from higher costs of borrowings. Homeowners who have mortgages are starting to feel their cash flow tighten. As the real economy slows down, eventually it will come to a halt. When it does, we might see history repeating itself during the economic depression in the late 1970s. While it may sound gloomy and scary, there are three things to watch out for to stop the bleeding in the market and potentially trigger a bull run even. Number one, stop the war. Restore the food supply chain in the Ukraine. Remove the sanction on Russia and the world shortages shall be mitigated. I think it is hard to achieve that right now and the war will go on until either side surrenders. It looks like Russia's intention now is to conquer Ukraine instead of stopping it from joining NATO. Nonetheless, I hope both sides can work things out for the sake of humanity and world peace. Number two, commodity price to go back to normal levels. Oil prices, metal prices, food prices and everything else are expensive today because all of us are rushing to buy them in view that they are going to get even more expensive the next day. Please don't wait until the majority of people lose their jobs before we realize the mess that we are in today. When commodity prices start to fall back by a good amount, that's when we want to go aggressive buying stocks again because businesses are then ready to deploy capex for growth once more. Number three, the saying goes, be greedy when everyone is fearful. In my experience, the most fearful period is when most analysts start to downgrade their stock calls very aggressively. When the most negative sentiment becomes a consensus, how bad can the market be? That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.